let's uh, use the techniques that we've been talking about and see if we can. Uh, and remember. Do you mind like saying them out, like saying the, the steps out? Sure. If no one else minds, like okay, so we should just start numbering. Excellent. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Took the so words right out of my mouth. We're not just adding or like releasing any carbon. I numbered. Sorry. Okay. The only thing we're fooling with is this last one. Now. We want to put numbers here that correspond to the numbers over here, and it looks like this is the same carbon as this one over here. Yeah. So I put in one, two, three, and four. So and then it sounded like you guys were using the technique of analyzing what changes are happening, which is excellent. Okay, so the BR is adding to the primary carbon. That's right, carbon number four. four now we not, use our numbers. Not mm -hmm. like the most stable, right? One, two, three. Not like a three or a two. OK, so, fair enough. So, the double bond is actually oh. not participating, right? Because it's adding to the last one. That's a good observation. Because otherwise... It Notice how the numbers make that much more apparent. So that's otherwise good. Otherwise it would come into the middle somewhere, right? That's an excellent observation. Yeah. So it's adding to the primary. So it's got to be something that has to do with sterics and not charges. So, oh, it's not much. Oh, so, right? so it's adding an We want an SN1 reaction. I mean, SN2, otherwise we would add right? on the... Because we want a substitution. We're not creating any. That's right. We want a substitution. So and it must um, be the HBr peroxide thing, right? I don't remember that these ones. I haven't done this chapter again, so I'm um, done anything again. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't remember the. I haven't done this one. I've only done the alkyl. So is it right that the, the the Br seems to be attaching to the where the, the CH3 three standard rather than the? It's just that's adding. True. So yeah. that's anti-Markovnikov, right? And that's not quite right. Yeah. Or not we'll, we'll try to clarify that as we okay. go along. Markovnikov and anti-Markovnikov only refers to attacks on double bonds. But as we've oh. noticed, we're not attacking the double bond. Yeah, exactly. We're, but so, so we're basically the making it a CH2. On the more hindered. We're making, we're making this a CH2, CH2, so we want okay. to pull a proton. All right, that is excellent. Very good. So let, let's go back to that for a second. The key thing here, after you put in your numbers, is to specify as specifically as possible, what changes you're making. So as specifically as possible, what changes are we making here? So a lot of people said, oh, we're putting a bromine on carbon-4. Well, that's good, but that's not as specific as we can be. What's the bromine replacing? Well, someone just said a, a hydrogen. So to be as specific as possible, you have to say, we're taking a hydrogen off of carbon-4 and replacing it with the bromine. So what I would do here now is I would squiggle this bond. This is the bond we need to break. And this is the bond we need to form. Notice that here we have two hidden hydrogens where we started with three hidden hydrogens. So we're replacing, so this is a substitution where we're replacing a hydrogen with a bromine. And you need to ask yourself, have you learned any ways to replace a hydrogen with a bromine? I'm sure we have, I can't remember. <laughs> I think your peroxides one might be right. Let's see, which one is that? Part I? I. Okay. All right, that's not too much uh, on, the wrong, uh, on the wrong track. <laughs> okay, um, we actually just went over how to replace hydrogens with bromines. So one thing that should, focus, to, should jump out at you here is okay. we're trying to do something to a carbon with no functional groups. We want a base. This carbon has no functional groups. So let's go through this together now. Yeah. So yeah. let's go through the rest of this together. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to attack a carbon that has no functional groups. Well, that should strike you as quite difficult. Because usually carbons with no functional groups don't react, right? We haven't learned many things that you can do to a carbon with no functional groups. One of the things that we've learned that you can do is radical halogenation, what we were just going over in the previous, in the previous example. Isn't that what we did in the previous example? We saw how radical halogenation substitutes a bromine for a hydrogen, right? Radical halogenation substitutes a bromine for a halogen, um, which is unusual because usually hydrogens are not acceptable leaving groups. But a radical halogenation, you can use the hydrogen as the leaving group. So what we need to do here is a radical halogenation. Um, but this is a little bit different from the previous one, because this is a radical halogenation where the molecule does have another functional group. It has this double bond. Now, this is called an alkene carbon. This is called an alkene carbon. Do you remember what the carbon next to an alkene carbon is called? Allylic. It's good that you remember that. It's called the allylic carbon. Allylic. This is the reaction of allylic halogenation, which you may or may not remember. But one of the reactions that looks like your instructor wants you to know is allylic halogenation. I don't know if you guys know which of these reagents here would give us the allylic halogenation. Which of these look like they're going to be a radical halogenation anyway? 
Um, so I was not a bad guess. Peroxides might give us a radical halogenation, but there's something else here that looks like it's a radical mechanism. A. Someone mentioned A. That's right. All right, I'm actually going to show you guys the mechanism for that. Um, I think it's useful to see the mechanism here. So first of all, NBS we should just think of as a source of bromine. We won't go through the mechanism for that, but NBS is a bromine source. The B here stands for bromo. So this is a source of bromine. And then the next step is the same as any radical halogenation. We use the energy from the light to make bromine radicals. That's what we need the light for. So this is a initiation step. Then in our propagation step one, this bromine is going to steal a hydrogen. And it's going to steal the hydrogen from this carbon. Do you remember what the arrows look like for radical mechanisms? Remember that if you're forming a bond in a radical mechanism, you have two single-headed arrows pointing towards each other. These are unusual. And we can't forget about this arrow. We can't leave this electron stranded in this bond. It has to turn into an unpaired electron. Well, that would give us HBr. Here we're forming the HBr bond. And we can see from this arrow that now we're forming an unpaired electron on our carbon number four. Now, this reaction, how did we know that, this, that we were going to take the hydrogen from the allylic carbon? There's something that makes it especially easy to take the hydrogen from an allylic carbon. If it's easy to take the hydrogen from the allylic carbon, that must be because there's something stabilizing this radical. What is stabilizing this radical? That pi bond. Yeah, and how does it stabilize it? The p orbital has overlaps them. Yeah, that's actually a good way to put it. What's the name for that, those overlapping p orbitals? Resonance, that's right. Incidentally, that's going to be the theme of your next term. The whole next term is about resonance. Uh, well, here's one thing that resonance is about. Um, so, even this term, though, there's some uh, important reaction yeah, to resonance. Yeah. yeah, it's unfortunate that resonance is introduced in the first term, but it doesn't become hugely important until the second term. But here's a case where it's important. So, there's another resonance structure where this unpaired electron would be on this carbon. Um, so, that is stabilizing this. That is something that makes it easy to do allylic radical halogenations. So um, even if there were other alkene carbons here, this would be the preferred place to take the hydrogen. In this case, this is really the only option because there really aren't any other carbons around. Um, but even if there were more carbons down here, we would still attack this one because it's next to the pi bond. Uh, let's see, where was I? So um, then the next step. Now, this radical is going to attack another Br2. Again, we're getting a steady stream of Br2s from the NBS. So this was propagation step one, and this is propagation step two. And now we're done. Good point. This is the product that we were trying to explain. We usually don't bother drawing the termination steps for radical um, mechanisms because um, they don't happen nearly as often as the propagation, and they don't give us the interesting product. So this is all we need to show the mechanism. What would happen next here? Well, now the bromine radical from propagation step two would enter into um, as the starting material for um, another propagation step one. That's why this is a chain mechanism, because the product from step two can go back and do another step one. That's why we would get billions of these propagation steps happening before we ever had a termination. So we don't need to bother worrying about the termination steps. All right, I, I did think it's important to go through the mechanism here because it shows why we're attacking the allylic carbon. We're attacking the allylic carbon because that gives us a resonance stabilized radical. Uh, so we know that we're going to put the bromine on the right carbon over here. So 
So the correct answer, so this was actually a one-step synthesis. Yeah. The correct answer is simply choice A. So what were the techniques that we used here? Well, one of the most important techniques was specifying as specifically as possible what changes were happening. It's not good enough to say that we're putting a bromine on carbon-4. It's better to say we're doing a substitution on carbon-4, and that's not good enough either. We had to say what we're substituting. We were substituting a bromine for a hydrogen. Well, the only way you know to substitute um, a, uh, a halogen for a hydrogen is radical halogenation. So only by being specific about exactly what changes are happening could we go through this. This can't be a normal SN1 or SN2 because we don't have a normal SN1 or SN2 leaving group. The only thing we know it had to do with a hydrogen leaving group is these radical mechanisms. So I said, um, all right, so, uh, and by the way, this is pretty much the same mechanism as the radical halogenation in the previous example that we didn't draw. There's a similar initiation and propagation steps, except it doesn't need NDS, but this initiation and these would be the same. 